And welcome to Fireside Chat with Pastor Ed. No, I'm just kidding. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. We're glad to have you tonight. Praise the Lord. Jesus is alive and well, and the kingdom of God is advancing. The devil is defeated. All right, we got technical issues. Testing one, two. Hello, hello, hello. Glory. Glory, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Testing one, two, three, and four and five. Do we have good audio? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I really don't care what the devil's going to do. The word in faith is my sword and shield, and Jesus is Lord of the way I feel. All right. Hallelujah. So let's say welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. So glad to have you. God is good. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. The Father's on the throne, and the Holy Ghost is at work in the earth. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Uh, we are continuing with our Bible study, the Bible in the light of our redemption, uh, going on with lesson two tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and share this out there and um, let you know that we are uh, here. For those who are just out there scrolling across, go ahead and get them hit and let, let them show up and join us. Praise the Lord. All righty. And um, it looks like my phone's going to die before this service is over, so hallelujah. All right, tonight, uh, last week we talked about the reason for creation, and they ultimately cu culminated in the creation of man. Tonight we're going to talk about the creation of man, and uh, there's a lot of material to cover here, so we're going to just jump in with both feet and get to running, all right? Praise the Lord. Um, Gen Genesis um, tells us, let's see here, um, we talked, that's right, last week we finished that with the crowning reason for the creation of man was for him to be able to have fellowship with God. God created man for his desire for fellowship. The account of, uh, in Genesis 1 of how God made for man before he, he created him, the, he planned the universe, he planned the earth, he set everything in order for his man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he purposed it, hallelujah, to be a habitat for, him, for man. Um, and when the God finished up, he said, and he said, he saw that it was good. Hallelujah. He, he <coughs> created, the, <coughs> he created a planet. He created a habitat that everything that man would ever need to meet every need. Hallelujah. And then he created this man. So he could have, uh, dwell here and that him and the Father could have fellowship. Um, glory to God. Look in Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his image, in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. <coughs> Adam was the first man and through him, and through his sin came the fall of all man, all humanity. Um, after the fall, man could not know God without a revelation from him. Because before that, he communed with the Father. The Father would come down in the cool of the day. Him and Adam would walk and talk. The Bible tells us when, when God came down in the cool of the day, Adam had hid himself from God. And uh, God cried out and said, Adam, where are you? He said, um, uh, I hid myself from you. And the, Lord, and the father said, have you eaten of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And he said, I did eat. Actually, he said, the woman you gave me gave it to me, and I ate it. You know, blamed the woman. And he turned to the woman. The woman said, well, the serpent beguiled me. Uh, Pass the buck stuff going on there. Um, Jesus, being incarnate, came and revealed that the father was a spirit being. In other words, not to be known after the flesh. The Father was not to be known after the flesh, could not be known after the flesh, had to be known supernaturally 
because God was spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. John 4, 24. Uh, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Paul disclosed and reveals to us in 1 Thessalonians, if you go ahead and turn over there. Hallelujah. Chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians. Hallelujah. Chapter 5. We know it's not 2 Thessalonians because there's not five chapters there. Um, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Now, not holy as in impure, I mean, uh, uh, perfection, but holy, complete, W-H-O-L-L-Y. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul reveals that the Father had created man as a triune being. Glory to God. Spirit of man is the real man created in the image of God. The soul includes the mind, the will, the intellect, emotions, the reasoning faculties. And then God created man in his own image, and, and then he created him as a spirit and a soul with a body. I love the way Brother Hagin used to say it. He said he was studying, as he was studying along the lines of spirit, soul, and body one day, he wrote down, with my spirit, I contact the spiritual realm. With my mind, I contact the intellectual realm. And with my body, I contact the physical realm. <clears throat> Glory to God. Man's soul and body fit for him, for his life, upon his upon the uh, upon this material universe, which had been created for him, the real man is spirit. Man was to walk in fellowship with the Father God, in his realm, which is the realm of the spirit. Man was to rule the world, and fellowship with the Father. God gave man a body, so that he could rule and reign over a natural creation. But he is a spirit created to fellowship with the Father. Hallelujah. God gave man a huge playground. Hallelujah. Designed to bring him pleasure and joy um, and excitement and uh, the ability to create and um, do wonderful things. You are not a body. You are a spirit. You have a soul. And you live in a body. I heard Charles Capps say this one time years and years ago, and I've used it. Um, your body's your earth suit. Just like an astronaut has to have a space suit to go into space, you got to have an earth suit to walk around on the earth. Praise the Lord. Um, your, your body is not you. Your mind is not you. You have a mind that you use. You possess a body that you use. But your mind and body are instruments through which your spirit, the real you, functions and operates. The man who is spiritually dead does not realize he was created in God's image to walk with him. That is because all natural man is able to know about reality. He gains through his physical senses. The physical senses of man, when, when, we, when we're body ruled, flesh ruled, carnal, Death, doom, flesh ruled. Um, we, if our body has supremacy in control, then it will flood the mind with the stimuli of the senses. And the mind will analyze and begin to determine that reality is what's coming through the sensory organs of sight, of smell, of taste. Um, touch and he hearing. Did I say hearing? I don't think so. Through your five senses. And, and man will begin to lean to those to tell him what's real and what's not real. Even to the point that if I can't see it, I don't believe it, which is directly in opposition to the just shall live by faith. We are to live by faith and not by sight. We live out of our spirits. So 
It's not that God doesn't want us to use our five physical senses. He doesn't want them to dominate our perception of reality. He wants us to have the perception of reality from our spirits and then let your body, your spirit, use your body and the mind to explore the natural realm in relationship to the spiritual oversight and spiritual authority and spiritual reality. Hallelujah. The physical sense organs of the body can only receive stimulus from like substance matter. In other words, you're only going to, you're, you're not going to get, you know, now that Jesus said, he that has ears, let him hear what the spirit says. He talked about these. Not talking about the natural ear with the, uh, the canal and, and, all, and I, the, the hammer and all the, I forgot all the different bones in there. It's been so long. Um, all the parts of the, aud of the auditory system um, that, that feed the brain and create sound. That wasn't what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about with your spirit hearing what the Holy Ghost was saying, which isn't with these ears. Amen. Hallelujah. But we hear natural things. We touch natural things. We smell. Um, we see. Amen. Our, our, our physical senses bring stimuli in. And without the revelation of that man is a spirit and that the spirit realm is a higher realm, we will begin to formulate a, a conscientiousness of natural materialistic things as the highest form of reality. Hallelujah. Well, not really hallelujah for that. Um, so you, but your senses could only perceive what's in the physical realm. According to scripture, there is a spiritual realm and a natural realm. The Father, the Holy Spirit, the angels, Satan, demons, all spirit beings, um, and our spirit, our, our physical senses can't contact them. Hello? We try Ouija boards, watch the Blair Rich Project, you know. Um, you get goosebumps sometimes. But that's simply that your spirit is now communicating through your body about the presence of something evil. Your physical body is not contacting them. You don't know them through your physical senses. Ephesians 6, look over in Ephesians 6, starting in verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. <clears throat> For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in uh, high places, whereunto you take you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having on your loins girt about with, the, with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, for therein I may speak <coughs> boldly as I ought to speak. See, this shows us there's spiritual warfare going on. I'm not putting on a natural. Now, Paul uses an analogy of spiritual armory to give a pictorial view to the reader. So he used the Roman soldier's armament to describe what we have in the spirit. Glory to God. So that they could, they could understand that although we are fighting a spiritual battle, we're not going to use the Roman soldiers. We're going to use the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. 
which is the word of God. Our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Our loins girt about with truth. So I used a natural analogy to give a picture of a spiritual armament for spiritual battle. Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so that spiritual weaponry, you go get you a, a um, mace, wind, do, lightsaber. Hello? Or find Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. Or get you Darth Maul's, for that matter. And it's not going to help you whip the devil. If they actually exist and they actually work the way they do in, in the Star Wars movies, it still wouldn't help you whoop the devil. But according to the cheap seats here, it would make it look cool. And on that note, I need a glass of water. Hallelujah. Amen. No, we fight our wep with weaponry that's beyond the realm of the natural is we fight with supernatural weaponry. Glory to God. We are not aware through our physical contact of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Or of angels. Okay, so that was really loud. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. My throat was dry. I got to be able to keep going. The sound person probably should have muted me when I put that to my mouth. <laughs> They're laughing because I guess apparently I was, y'all probably heard it, I can't hear it, that I slurped. <laughs> okay, all right. We are not aware through physical contact of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now I know we sing that song, I Hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. We don't hear the angels' wings brushing. Okay? I, I know we sing that, and, you know, we kind of use that as a, you know, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I, I can feel his mighty power and his grace. Um, we're trying to use terms relating to our physical senses of something that we are really only spiritually perceived. Now, not saying that your spirit can't then interpret and flow through your body, but it's, it's, it's touched by and it's interpreted by your human spirit. Angels can be present whether you feel their, if you hear, may hear their angel wings brushing or not. Or you hear. And quite frankly, they may not have wings. How do you know? The Bible says that we've entertained angels unawares. If they had wings, we'd have known it. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Some guy shows up with wings, unless you're an X-Man freak, you're going to think angel. Some of you all got the X-Wing uh, comment. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <laughs> John, oh, Janice, they heard the slurp Loud and clear. Thank you, Janice, for that confirmation word. <laughs> Look, if you will, to John 16. John chapter 16. Looking over here in the verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come, or the paraclete will not uh, come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. <coughs> of righteousness, because I go to my Father. And you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have many things to say, but you cannot bear them now. Hallelujah. Um, Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, 
He will guide you in all truth, for she will not, he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Look at Hebrews chapter, uh, look at um, John 14, back up just a little bit. <clears throat> John 14, 23. And Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Hebrews chapter one. Glory to God. Blessed be the Lord. Hebrews chapter one. Come on pages. Verse 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth the minister for them who are the heirs of salvation? First Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost of, of God and that the spirit of God is dwelleth in you first peter 5 8 be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour mark 16 Verse 17, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, etc. And then 1 John chapter 4, followed up by James. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try or test or prove the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every man that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the Spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now, think about that. We keep looking for the Antichrist and beast to rise up. And John writes, 2,000 years ago, that spirit of Antichrist is already in the earth. It was already at work. It was already functioning. The spirit of Antichrist, wherever you've heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. Ye are of God, little children. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? And have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. They that are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth, oh, and the world heareth them, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And then James 4 Hallelujah. Verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he shall, or he will, flee from you. <clears throat> we are not aware through physical contact of the Holy Spirit, angels, demons, principalities, powers, mites, dominions, Rulers of the darkness of this world, cherubims, seraphims. But our spirit man, in communion with God, we are aware of the spiritual forces around us. Hallelujah. You know, just because a doctor, they've cut people open, they can't find his spirit. Um, materialists and atheists begin to say there's no such thing as 
the spirit realm because they can't put it in a test tube. They can't prove it. They can't, you know, do scientific, uh, use scientific theory on that to prove it as a, as a reality. It's because it's a higher realm. It's functioning in a realm beyond the natural. Hallelujah. Many men have refused to have God of the knowledge because he's not, they're not able to see them with the physical eye, hear him with the physical ear, or touch him. Look at Romans 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things uh, of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible or uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and the birds and the four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God um, also gave them up unto uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. Amen. And then we're jumping over to verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in the knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, a mind void of judgment. Hallelujah. To do those things which are not convenient. See, man in his fallen state did not want to acknowledge God. Because he could not touch him with the flesh. Perceive him through physical senses. And therefore, he began to create gods that he could touch, that he could see, and he could put on the, on the mantle. And, uh, you know, one of the things that got Paul in trouble was in the city of Ephesus and the goddess Diana. And when they started preaching, getting people saved, um, the, uh, image, the uh, image makers for the goddess lost all their business. And so they had him arrested because it was messing up their whole gig. You know, their livelihood was going down the tubes because people weren't wash, worshiping Diana. They started worshiping Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, fish might just say, well, say there is no, nothing outside of water. As for a man who's limited to a sense knowledge, he wants to say there's nothing outside of the physical. So we conclude this, that man is a spirit being created to walk with the Father God on this, his level. When God created man, God had no body. Yet man's fellowship was perfect and complete with him. Giving us the understanding that the body was subordinate to the spirit. Because man was created in God's image to fellowship with God at his level. Spirit was the dominant force. Man's spirit was to rule body, body and mind. The body exists <clears throat> for the spirit and soul to operate in the physical realm. Your spirit uses the soul and the physical body. To carry out its desires. When man leaves his body. The body begins to dissolve and decay instantly. Because it's no longer needed. God created man. With uh, several thoughts in mind. One is he gave him a will. Hallelujah. Man had a will. The will which was the power to choose. 
uh, power of choice, the ability to choose and to determine one's own actions. In other words, uh, he could choose his own actions. Now, there were consequences to him, but he could choose them. God was assuming a great responsibility in creating a being with a will. But only a being with a will could satisfy the longing of the father heart of God for fellowship. It would just been a machine, been robotic. You know, let all the angels of God worship him. Well, they got it there. They worship, 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 worship. They have their choice. Unless they want to get cast out with the devil and, uh, you know, be put in bondage and chains and reserved unto the judgment. God's father heart wants fellowship. And the only being that can give God the satisfaction of his heart for fellowship was the man created in his likeness and in his image after his kind. A spirit being man with a free will to choose to worship God. Hallelujah. There is no fellowship with a puppet. You've seen the dummies, you know, ventriloquist shoes. They don't have fellowship. You know, they, they project personality into the dummy. I wonder if we could come up with Oh, anyway, I'll just stop there. They project personality into the dummy, but it's not fellowship. Okay? Amen. This, it had to come from a man, not as an instinctive response of obedience, but as a result of a deep love by his own choice, because he loves the creator. He loves the fellowship with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The obedience of man comes out of his heart of love for the father. God gave man a mind. The scripture declares that when man was created, he was, a, he had a mind intellectually, you know, such character, he was able to name the entire animal creation. Look at Genesis two nineteen. Hallelujah. Genesis 2 and 19. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, to all the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field, but for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. <laughs> Adam named all the animals. There's over five, there's almost, there's over half a million species on the planet. And he's naming them. Kind of takes us away from the theories of science that man was walking around going, Oga Moga, Mba, Mugga Mugga, Ooh, Mugga Mugga, uh, mm, fire, fire, won't fire. I mean, Seriously. Remember the Geico commercials? So easy. Even a caveman could do it. You know, of course, and the cave, they had cavemen who, who walk around being offended all the time because of the uh, stereotypical uh, stupidity of cavemen. Anybody remember those? Um, but the fact is, we have, we've been taught that, you know, there was a, it was a period of, I forgot, Cro-Magnum man or Neanderthal man or whatever man it was. That, you know, was just a dummy. Oh, he walk around with cave, walk around with club. Mm -hmm. Can't talk. God created man in his image, after his likeness, after his kind, with an intelligence level that only was surpassed by God himself. And Adam named all the creatures and living things of the earth. Glory to God. He possessed intellectual uh, capacities that enabled him to rule creation. Science says, now, you know, people who love to follow science until we quote it for the Bible purposes, and then they, they, they get all whatever, that man only uses 10% of his brain power. Why have we evolved with only using 10%? And I submit to you, it's not because we evolved to such brain capacity, yet only use 10. I present to you that we devolved from using 100% and are now only using 
because of the fall of man and because of the rule of sin and darkness. And it robbed man of the intellectual capacity that God gave him in creation. Uh, chew on it. Think about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And we know the reason for man's existence is the father heart's craving for fellowship. Therefore, man's mental capacities were such that his mind could fellowship with the mind of the creator. You, you know, you hear people, um, you get somebody and they say, well, they, you know, they're, 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 they're equal, in, you know, in so many ways. They're in, intellectually equal. Amen. You know, you know, you don't want, um, you know, for, for, for a woman to have somebody who, who can't communicate with them um, intellectually at the level they are at creates problems. Excuse me. And vice versa. For a man to have a wife and they can't, you know, they can't talk about anything other than, you know, um, what TV program was on tonight? Because they can't, they can't have any kind of conversation. If one is high, higher intellectually than the other, it, it does, it, there's, there's a problem there. God created man so he could fellowship with him spiritually and even at the intellectual realm. Glory to God. Man's body was a perfect fit for the, the, uh, the, the universe, the earth. Man was not mortal or immortal. When God created man, he created him a body that was an eternal body that was to never die, never grow old, <clears throat> never wear out, never be sick. All that was a result of the fall of man. And mortal means he became death doomed. See, we keep looking, people keep looking for immortality. It's not to be found. Well, when we get raptured, nope, we'll get a glorified body and we will get an eternal body that will never wear out, never grow old, never get sick, never die. Hallelujah. The body that God created for man was, the perf was a perfect fit as the temple of Adam's spirit to be God's under ruler on the earth. And then God granted man dominion, authority, and responsibility. <clears throat> and glory to God. Woo! I'm going just as fast as I can go through this. My, 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 my. Um, we, sometimes we talk about the physical senses. We overlook the place that man held in the heart of God. He was the object of God's love and affection. It was the joy of the Father's heart to give man dominion over the works he created. God made man to have creation and the ability to rule. Um, Psalm 8, verses 3 through 9, is the revelation of the creation of the first man as the Father uh, desired him to be. And verse 5 says, Thou hast made him but a little lower than God. Now the King Jimmy says made him a little lower than angels, but it's Elohim in the Hebrew, primarily translated God, in the plurality of three or more, Trinity, God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Same word used in Genesis 1-1. And God, in the beginning, God created Elohim. Psalm 8-5. Elohim. God created him a little lower than himself. Jerry Savelle used to preach a sermon about it was like a replica. He looked so much like the Father and so much like God, it took it took like an expert to tell the difference. Hallelujah. He would created his man as close to himself as possible. He was to be God's companion and under ruler. And somebody shout hallelujah. The dominion of man reached up to, but not including, 
the throne of God. How do you know? Because that's what was cleansed with the blood of Jesus when Jesus redeemed man was up to the mercy seat before the throne of God was all cleansed by the blood of Jesus. But the throne of God was not meaning man's sin tainted all that because that's how far man's authority went. And when he turned it over to Satan, it tainted all of that. Hebrews 2 9 tells us that man's lost dominion in Adam has been given to Christ or taken by Christ uh, by virtue of his sacrifice on man's behalf. Hebrews 1 3. Um, look there. Hebrews 1 3. Now I'm just going to give you a heads up. We're going over tonight, uh, the 8 o'clock cutoff. So there's. Hang on. Glory to God. Hebrews 1, 3, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The way Adam ruled was through the authority that was given. And Jesus now came and got it back. Hallelujah. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Adam was to rule by his power, the word of his power. He was to subdue the earth, replenish the earth, have dominion over the earth. How? The same way that Jesus did when he was here. He spoke. He spoke to the storm. Peace be still. Come out. He spoke to the devils. Amen. Be healed. He spoke. That's what Adam all had Adam do. Adam could have stopped the whole thing in the Garden of Eden. He didn't. I'd love to know why, but that's another question for another day. Hallelujah. He had so much authority, he even had the legal right to confer it onto another spirit being, which he did to Satan. When in the garden, when he committed high treason, man had an awesome responsibility. He was to be responsible for the joy of the father. The entire human race was yet unborn. God gave Adam the right and the privilege to procreate the family he longed for. Oh, wow. I said, oh, wow. God could have spoken all in existence. He could have formed the entire human race from the dust of the earth. But he gave Adam and Eve the privilege and the responsibility to procreate his family. He made them fellow workers in his plan. They were to be there for the joy and pleasure of the Father. But instead of uh, creating about this by one word, God basically said, I give, I permit you to give birth to my children. Rear, educate, care for them, teach them to love me and to respond to my yearning for a family. So man's purpose, creation, was fellowship and giving the father a family. Man's responsibility in eternity is, uh, in creating that family was awesome. Hallelujah. So then man became the custodian. This is this is strong now. Don't fall out of your chair. Became the custodian of God's joy. And when we when when until we were born again, we were in spiritual death. We didn't understand these things. We couldn't see these things. Um, we've become familiar with creation. We see creation but most of the time in the church from a natural realm. Um, we don't see man as the reason. Our, having human spirits alienated from God who do not grasp the heart of the Father of God for children and that for that to create joy for him um, with dominion over creation, we, we begin to see a God with no love, no mercy, a big guy upstairs with a baseball bat waiting to whack you if you mess up. Man became a pitiful failure. The creation of 
four wheat, worm of the dust. We see creation as Satan would have us see it. In 1 Corinthians 15, 45 through 49, um, the creation of Adam and the new spiritual creation in Christ. Adam we see marred by the entrance of spiritual death, losing his fellowship with the Father of God and his authority over creation. In Christ we see spiritual death destroyed. Man made a new creature as free from the dominion of spiritual death as though Adam never sinned. We know the place and reason for the first creation and we'll eventually understand what it mean, what we mean to the heart of the Father God. Because a low conception of creation in Adam has given us a low concept of the new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. Let's let's get to these um the, tonight's questions. Hope you answer them. It says, what did the Father create? Why? I'm sorry. Why did the Father create man in his own image? And man must have been created as near like deity as possible to be God's child and heir. That's the answer I, I wrote. Um, you could word it differently, but he had to be created as much like deity as possible in order to be God's child and heir. So what kind of being is God? Jesus said it. God is a spirit. What is man? Man is a spirit. John 4, 24, Jesus said that God is a spirit. <clears throat> In 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, Paul writes and says, I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body <coughs> be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Man is a spirit, has a soul, lives in a body. Why is it that natural man does not recognize the existence of the spiritual? That's because natural man gains all of its information from the five physical senses. These senses can only receive stimulus from the substance, from like substance and matter from the natural. In what realm are we to live? Well, man's primarily a spirit being. Created to walk with the Father of God on his level. Uh, Romans writes in one place and says, in, in an alternate translation, that um, it says uh, that we should walk in newness of life. You know, we're, we're born again to walk in newness of life. An alternate translation says the, to walk in a whole new sphere altogether. So when you got born again, you're able to walk once again in the spirit realm, the way God created us. Hallelujah. So why did God give man a will? I mean, he could have just made us little robots. Oh, we must obey. We must obey. We must obey. Um, but God created man for fellowship. With no will, uh, man would just be a robot or a puppet and not a person. He must be able to worship God because he wants to, not because he has to. If you pay somebody to hang out with you because you're lonely, you really aren't having fellowship or relationship or anything. Because the only reason they're there is because they're getting paid. God didn't need a, God did not want a created robot. God was not interested in creating man who would. I mean, creating another being that would have to fly around the throne and go, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Because it had to. God wanted a created being who had the right to choice and would make the choice to fellowship with him. What incident reveals the type of mind Adam had well, according to Genesis 2 19 and 20 his naming of creation he possessed a mind that could fellowship with the mind of the creator number seven what kind of body did Adam possess initially Adam possessed an eternal human body which was neither mortal nor immortal because mortal meaning death doom or Satan ruled it only happened at the fall 
And what scriptures reveal the authority that Adam had before the fall? Well, I'm just going to read them to you. You can look them back later again. Genesis 128, Psalm 8, 3 through 9, Hebrews 2, 5 through 8. Let me read them again. Genesis 128, Psalm 8, 3 through 9, Hebrews 2, 5 through 8. And what authority was Adam's? The same authority that Jesus will have when he takes over and rules the whole universe because he took it back from the devil. How near to God, verse number nine, how near like God had Adam been created? Adam was created in God's class and realm in his image and likeness. Number 10, why is it necessary for us to see the place the first creation held in God's plan? Because it gives us a revelation of what it, we mean to the heart of the Father God. It gives us a revelation of what we mean to the heart of the Father God. Praise the Lord. Well, I, I'm surprised I got through that and got it done. I, I'm completely surprised. Hallelujah. Whew, it's time for me to come up for air. Glory to God. How do, that, was a, that was a lot of stuff in that lesson. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So glad y'all could join us tonight. And uh, we didn't have, really have any uh, techie issues in the middle. We didn't shut down. Didn't lose connection. Uh, that's just how that made you. Amen. I um, want you to join us on Sunday. Praise God. As we continue ministering on the uh, fruit of the spirit. Praise God. And uh, we'll, we'll have a good time of that. Amen. And um, but until we meet again, uh, please remember these words from first John chapter five, verse four, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.